Hey Tough Center, it's my editor Joey here with another episode of Future Sonic. Today we're looking at Megalo Cannon, the latest set to be released in Japan. So let's go. Megalo Cannon is the ninth black and white set to be released in Japan, and the third set to feature Team Plasma covers. It also sees a continuation of the Pokemon X mechanic and a return of restored fossil Pokemon. With that, I'd like to get the restored Pokemon out of the way first, as, well, crap, I just want to get them out of the way. For a while now, fossil Pokemon have been highly unplayable, originally due to the fact that they relied on the fossil trainer cards. Trainers that were played to the bench in place of a basic Pokemon and that could evolve into the basic fossil next turn. Now, this mechanic on its own wasn't terrible. In fact, back in Majestic Dawn, we received both Dome and Helix fossils that could evolve themselves if you attach their corresponding energy type to them, putting their evolved counterparts one step away from being simple basics. And to be honest, they were awesome, just because they were playable fossils. But that was a long time ago, and since Black and White, they decided to try and revitalize fossils with the new Restored mechanic. But instead of playing dead in the Fossil Trainer as your basic, now you use the Fossil Trainer to check the bottom 7 cards of your deck and search for the corresponding fossil and play it to your bench. In theory, out of that mechanic. In theory. The major problem with the mechanic was the fact that we had no way to really guarantee having a fossil Pokemon in the bottom 7 cards of our deck until now. The three new fossil Pokemon from Mega Cannon, Archen, The Leap, and Turtoga, all have the ability Call of the Ancient. Which states that if they're in your discard pile, you can place them on the bottom of your deck. So this makes playing them to the bench more of a certainty, but does it make them more playable? Personally, I don't think it does. Normally, you'll just get a basic to hand and play it to your bench. With the new restored Pokémon, you have to get them to hand, pitch them to the discard pile, use their own ability to place them on the bottom of your deck, then you use the trainer to play them to the bench. So a simple two-step maneuver to get a basic is stretched out to four steps for the fossils. And you have to do this every time you want to restore something. Now, this could have been balanced by the fact that restored Pokemon lines were more powerful than normal basics in Stage 1s. They could have, but they're not. They're pretty much standard basics in Stage 1s, with very rare exceptions. Look that Cradilly. So here I find myself asking the Pokemon company, do you really expect people to play these cards? There's no reward for the extra investment into the lines, and you can get the same levels of damage output from standard basics and stage ones. So really, I can see the thinking, and the idea to make the new mechanic playable is admirable, but still too much investment for no reward. Maybe this time we went back to the Majestic Dawn fossil mechanic, and this time there was a way to search out old amber that isn't called Aerodactyl. Moving on to the X's, and boy do we have some X's in this set. I'll start with the set's headlining X, Genesect X, a basic grass type with 170 hit points and the ability to turn plasma energy into capture if it comes from your hand, as well as two personal ace tools, both of which offer him a new attack. So let's talk attacks. Good hit points and a nice ability don't count for too much if he can't fight for himself. His first attack is Megalo Cannon, which for two grass and a colus, he delivers 100 damage to a defending Pokemon and 20 to a bench Pokemon. This sounds kind of familiar. Yeah, this is basically Dark Cry without the Dark Patches or Save Line. But to be honest, I can see him seeing play just because of Red Signal, his ability, which, as I mentioned, can turn any Cosmic Energy you wish to attach from your hand into Pokemon Capture, and he doesn't have to be active to use it. Moving on to Genesect's two attacks. First, we have G Scope, an attack that, like Raikou X, can snipe the bench for 100 damage and it costs exactly the same as Megalo Cannon, at 2 Grass and a Pulse. Then we have G-Booster, which has a slight twist, as you can deliver 200 damage to the defending Pokémon for the same 2 Grass and a Pulse, but you have to discard 2 energy cards attached to Genesect X. So, Genesect can attack for decent damage, and can even clean up in the late game if you choose to run one of his tools as your ace back. Plus he comes with potentially 4 captures built in, effectively giving you 8 catches in your deck. I'd be incredibly surprised if we got the release of Megalo Cannon and Genesect hadn't become a serious chase cannon. Next I'll cover something a little more kawaii des with Jirachi X, an X Pokemon with 90 hit points and the ability Guiding Star. 
The ability allows you to grab a supporter from your deck when you play Jirachi from your hand to your bench. It also has the attack Hypno Strike, which for Metal Double Colas deals 60 damage, and then both Jirachi and the defending Pokemon are put to sleep. I don't think this card will see much play, and if it does, I can only see it being used as a consistency card in Clink Clank Rebellion, where well, there's less chance of its low hit points being a liability. On the plus side, this card is damn cute. With that little skull reminding me of the American box art Kirby, the only problem I can point out with the artwork is the lack of change between the normal X and its full art counterpart. This is very personal, but when a card has both a normal form and a full art, I like there to be some variation between the two. Even though Jirachi is in a different position, his pose and facial expression are identical, with major differences being the angle which we're looking at Jirachi, and the way his stream is fall. Overall, the art is good, but some more variation would have been nice. Next we have Verizion X. A grass type with 170 hit points, the ability Spring Breeze, which prevents Pokemon with grass energy attached from being affected by status conditions, and in fact removing pre-existing statuses if Verizion goes into play or the energy is attached after the status is afflicted, Verizion X also has the attack Emerald Slash. I pray this doesn't get renamed, it sounds awesome, which deals 50 damage for a Grass and a Colas, and allows you to attach 2 Grass Energy from your deck to your bench Pokemon. With the mix of its ability and the secondary effect of its attack, I can see Verizion being a likely partner for Genesect Packs. Even though Genesect won't be able to attack any faster due to Verizion needing 2 attachments to get going, Verizion can be used to set up multiple Genesects in the space of a few turns. Plus, Verizion X can offer itself and Genesect immunity from the ever popular Hypnotoxic Laser, plus the slew of guaranteed statuses that this set is offering us. On the note of artwork, unlike Jirachi, Verizion X does offer some nicely varied artwork between its normal X and its full art, with both offering action poses that imply speed, which is oddly enough what its attack can offer. Moving on, in the set we have Palkia X. With 180 hit points and surprisingly, but not unexpectedly, a dragon typing. He's not carrying an ability like more than half the X's in the set, but he does have two attacks. First is Strife, which for three colors delivers 50 damage and allows you to switch Palkia with one of your bench Pokemon. A basic hit and run attack. And to be honest, three colorless energies to do 50 damage seems a little lackluster to me. Especially when the ability to run to the bench isn't really that pivotal in the format that you of Pokemon capture. Maybe the next attack will make up for it. Next we have Dimension Heal, which for Grass, Water, and Double Colors deals 80 damage and has Valkyrie heal 20 damage from itself for every plasma energy attached to it. Now, in my opinion, this attack is a lot better. 80 damage is still a shy for 4 energy, but the capability to heal and the fact that the attack can be ready turn 2 with the use of Colorus Machine more than makes up for having to set up a free shot in your opponent's X Pokemon. And if you put the Eevee Eye on Palkia, you can find yourself with a happy little tank. If we assume your Palkia has an Eevee Eye attached and 2 Colorus energy, then your opponent has to hit you for 150 damage a turn, which will then be wound down to 90 damage a turn just to get a 2 shot. Now, let's assume that the average damage you'll take from attack is 90. You'll end up buffering that to 70, and then you heal 40, leaving you on 30 damage going into your opponent's next turn. Following this pattern, it will take your opponent 5 turns to knock out your Palkia. So, yeah, I think we can be happy with the fact that we're free shotting our opponent's defending Pokemon. And now we move on to our final X, Dialga X, another Dragon type with 180 hit points, 2 attacks, and no ability. The Helga's first attack is Reverse Edge, which for a Psychic, a Metal, and a Colas deals 50 damage, and on a coin toss can return a card from your discard pile to your hand. Hmm, that sounds familiar. Oh yeah, Hexadrill, which did the exact same thing for an easier attack card to no coin toss. And to be honest, nobody's trying to make Hexadrill into a main deck card right now. So, just like Palkia, maybe his second attack can make this card worthwhile. And that second attack is Time Progression, which does 90 damage for 4 colorless energy, and you discard cards from the top of your opponent's deck equal to the number of plasma energy attached to die out there. So potentially we have the return of Durant with damage added in. The one problem with this thinking is to duplicate what Durant did, you'll need all four of your plasma energy attached to Dialga. Meaning if your Dialga gets knocked out, you're gonna have to spend a few turns with Thunderous X active to get all those plasma energies back. And I personally don't think that Dialgo can match the Durant and Nilic deck in terms of pure speed. Sounds like a novel idea, 
But on my Durant, I don't think what this one will work. With this set X is covered, let's take a look at the surprise goodies it's offering us as secret rares. First we have Execute. This is a reprint from Spiral Force and Thunder Knuckle, the sets that will become our Plasma Freeze. Now I've always thought that this was an interesting card due to its ability, Propagation. The ability basically reads as once per turn, add this card to your hand if you discard pile. What I find interesting about it is the effect states once per turn, but the card is being sent from your discard pile, which is public knowledge, to your hand, which is private knowledge. Put simply, even though the card states once per turn, you can use it as often as you like, because as soon as it enters your hand, it's a different execute. This makes it great for cards like Computer Search, Ultra Ball, and the Plasma Freeze Revile, assuming the Revile is released in trees, as you can easily pitch executes, and if you need more discard for it, you can just grab one, or more, back, and pitch them again. I would advise though, after pitching executes, don't grab them back until your next turn as you don't want your discard fodder ending back into your deck. The next secret rare I'd like to look at is Verizion. This is a reprint of the Noble Victory's Verizion, the one with double draw and leaf follow. Now since this card was released, it's had very little effect on the competitive game, except for back when Six Corners was a big deck. And I'll be honest, I don't think the card is bad, it's just ill-suited to a lot of decks in the current format. But with that said, it's not impossible for the format to shift in a way that Verizion becomes a viable Pokemon to place in your deck. And having a secret row just means that when you find a deck for her, you'll be able to use an even prettier version than before. But meanwhile though, it seems as if the Verizion reprint will mostly act as trade bait and collector fodder. But all like this makes me want the card to be playable. I mean, come on, look at that print. She knows she's gonna let you draw something good. Following on from Verizion, we have Dust Noir from Boundaries Crossed. Much like Verizion, Dust Noir hasn't gotten up too much recently. In fact, I don't think it's really impacted the format at all. People have tried experimenting with it with Darkrai, Kyurem, and basically anything else that can spread damage. But to no avail. To put things bluntly, this is another card sitting there anxiously waiting for its day to come. But until then, enjoy a nice cozy place in my mind. And finally, the last secret rare in Megalo Cannon. Rare Candy, and I can guarantee that this card will be sold out as soon as pre-orders go up on it, as players are going to want to play sets of this card, because everyone knows you can't just play one Rare Hollow Candy, and it being a secret rare is only going to add to its pure bling factor. As to the fact that this card is most likely never going to be cycled, as Rare Candy tends to be that, that card that's reprinted every season so we can still play Stage 2s, and I can see this going for a hefty price. So put simply, you pull us at Breeze and it's pretty much Christmas comes early if you don't care about blinging up your own deck. And that wraps up the X's, the secret rares and the fossils. So that just leaves us with the trainers and final thoughts. So what noteworthy trainers have we got in Megalo Cannon? Well starting with the supporters we have Caitlyn. She lets us take as many cards as we like from our hand and add them to the bottom of our deck. Then we're able to do that many cards. And all I can say about Caitlyn is, hello Claydol, as that's the first thing I thought when I read that effect. To be honest though, it isn't a bad effect, it's a new form of direct draw, you can get rid of cards from your hand that you don't need at the moment, in a way that lets you gain access to them later, and without the risk of drawing them again like you could with a card like M. It's incredibly straightforward and incredibly good, as I personally thought the font has been lacking consistent direct draw that can hit decent numbers. Sure, we have Bianca, but the amount we draw depends on how small our hand is, and the large hand has tended to render Bianca moot. Whereas with Sharon, we were always guaranteed three cars. Caitlyn allows us to cycle our deck without effectively limiting numbers unless your hand is incredibly small, but in situations like that, any kind of plus would most likely be advantageous. Moving on from Caitlyn, we have Iris, and well, Iris is basically a potential plus 50 to your next attack. She takes every prize your opponent has taken and turns it into a plus power. Now, whereas this card is amazing in your late game, in your opening few turns it is completely useless. Your opponent won't have taken any prizes, so you simply gain nothing from using Iris. At least the Bucks training from Legend Awakened the way you to draw two cards. I think it was just ill and plus power rolled into one. But yeah, Iris can be good late game, but things are a bit up in the air if people will play her even with her full art being released in the same set. Moving on to the noteworthy items, and let's look first at the A-spec cards. I've already mentioned G-Scope and G-Blaster, but alongside them we also have Scoop Up Cyclone, and this card is Scoop Up from Base Set, now it's an A-spec card. For those who aren't familiar with Base Set Scoop Up, 
it's super scoop up without the coin toss. Just play it, choose Pokemon, and pick it up, energy and all. With that in mind, Scoop Up Cyclone has the exact same advantages as Super Scoop Up, acting as a way to switch, heal, and conserve energy from reactive Pokemon, or any Pokemon to be precise. I will be shocked to the core if at least a handful of successful decks aren't running this card, as it's immensely useful. And if your deck is already running Super Scoop Up, then what do you have to lose by running a card that says, do that without the coin toss? And with that we come to the final ace spec in the set, Master Ball. An ace spec that simply lets us grab any Pokemon from our deck. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. No costs, no limitations, no coin toss, just grab a Pokemon. Master Ball, I feel, is most comparable to Luxravol from a couple of seasons ago. In fact, it had a similar stipulation to the ace spec cards that we use today. But instead of only being allowed one per deck, Luxravol limited us to only be able to play it if there wasn't one already in our discard pile. And to be fair, every deck had one Luxra Ball in it. The ability to grab a Pokemon at no cost and no risk was a powerful tool to have, and I feel that Master Ball could be the same. Although, how it fares in the format where we have computer search might change the opinion of the overall player base. Only time will truly tell. With the Ace covered, let's move on to the normal items in the set. Firstly, we have the three fossil cards. The Root Fossil, Cover Fossil, and the Plume Fossil. All of which are reprints from previous sets, and each of which allow you to check the bottom 7 cards of your deck, and place a corresponding restored Pokemon onto your bench if you find it there. Nothing new or special there, so let's move on to the new, three new tool cards in the set. The tools I want to cover first are the Yarn X Silvers, called such because they both have silver in their name, and both offer benefits to the Pokemon they're attached to if they're not a Pokemon X. The first Non X Silver is the Silver Bangle, which if attached to a non-X Pokemon, will allow that Pokemon to deliver an extra 30 damage to a Pokemon X, effectively going a step beyond negating EPI, and offering further incentive to play Pokemon that are not Xs, or are designed to counter Xs. So let's move on to his gold breaker will now push out 150 damage to an X Pokemon, and only leave it with a sliver of health that pretty much anything else can take care of if it has to. The second non-X Silver is the Silver Mirror, or as I would like to call it, Sigilis' best friend ever. Put simply, non-X equipped with the Silver Mirror is immune to damage and effects from Plasma Pokemon, meaning that Sigilis from the Presence Assaulted can now be immune to attacks from both Xs and Plasma Pokemon, leaving only a tiny amount of the format being able to actually hit it, and just adding to Sigilis' already impressive ability to wall opposing decks. With the non-X Silvers covered, that leaves just one item card left to talk about before I wrap up with my final thoughts on the set. And that item is the tool card, Reversal Trigger. This is the first Plasma specific tool card that I've seen, excluding Plasma Badge, which I'm pleasantly surprised to see is getting released here, and it has a heck of an effect. If a Pokemon equipped with Reversal Trigger is a Plasma Pokemon and is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, you can switch your deck for any card and hand it to your hand. Now I don't have to explain how purple being able to grab any given card from your deck can be. The Root Search is already a widely used card because of its ability to grab any card, and this card isn't an A spec. Now I know losing a Pokemon isn't the preferred method for triggering a card to get this kind of ability off, but to be honest, it's easy to look at this as a trainer version of Twins, and unless you're absolutely dominating the current match, you're bound to lose a Pokemon or two meaning that you might as well have a way to benefit, or at least recover from loss of that Pokemon. And heck, if you're dominating the game, then you really shouldn't need to grab a card from your deck, as you're already doing fine already. And with that, I'm done with Megalotana for the moment. In closing, I'd just like to wrap up with what I think of the set. Personally, I think this is an incredibly strong set. It offers the potential for creation of new decks while still helping older decks adapt to a new format. I can see Gen Set Verizion becoming a big thing when the set is released, and most likely putting an end to Keldeo Blastoise if it does. One thing this new set has done to irk me though is the fact that it's already introduced Pokemon that are simply designed to be anti-plasma, and I'll be sure to create a video highlighting them and how I feel about their introduction so soon after the plasma mechanic was reintroduced. So with that in mind, I'll sign off for now. Stay tuned for part 2 where I'll cover the noteworthy normal Pokemon, and if you like what you've seen, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Rasa Joey. You guys are the top percent. Laters.